Hi, Jesse Nebulous here. It's been a while. Two years, in fact. Part of that has been due to ill health, the pandemic, depression, and the dreaded art block. But I'm working my way through these things, and I'm back with a new video that's a little different. Here I'm going to talk about some very specific things. Namely, five toxic art ideas that have seriously stunted my growth as an artist, in the hope that this will help you avoid them, or at least rethink them. Number one, references are for fake artists. This is a prevalent idea in amateur art communities, and it's 100% garbage. You wouldn't expect a chef to never follow a recipe, would you? It's really no different. Sure, if a chef makes the same dish over and over, they likely don't need the recipe in front of them anymore, but that comes with repetition and experience. To make a dish they've never made before, they need to follow some kind of instructions. And it's no different for artists. Draw enough trees from reference and eventually you can likely create one from imagination, like I can now, but that's because I drew a lot of trees in the last year. Number two, sketchbooks glorified. I love sketchbook tour videos, but I think viewing sketchbooks as a collection of fully realized pristine pieces of work is problematic. I internalized this idea to the point I expected myself to fill one sketchbook of completed pieces every month. After a few months, I shut down creatively, and that's because I was, for one, expecting way too much output for myself, especially given my health issues because I have an autoimmune disease that affects my joints and my organs, but also because I wasn't giving myself the freedom to just be messy, to sketch, and to experiment. Now, I primarily view sketchbooks as places to practice and experiment. I give myself the freedom to try, and most importantly, to fail, because knowing what doesn't work is the only way to get to what does work. Failure is just part of the process. Number three, fundamentals are f only for realism artists. I've run into this mindset a lot in very young artists who prefer stylized art, and I very much disagree. Understanding color theory, shading, and yes, even anatomy comes into play in highly stylized work. If you think popular anime style artists never studied anatomy and gesture, you are likely very mistaken. It's still a vital tool set, if for no other reason, that it helps you to visualize your subjects in space. It helps you understand form, the way light falls on your subject. And unless you work primarily in grayscale, color theory, even just the basics, are an absolute must. Or you're going to get very frustrated when the colors you mix turn into mud. Number four, suffering fuels art. This topic always makes me think of Van Gogh, one of the most iconic painters of all time. Tormented by mental illness, he led an unhappy and short life. There's no doubt he poured his suffering into his work, but the tragedy of that is that he lived in a time when medicine wasn't advanced enough to help him. Today, he could likely be successfully treated. Would he still be a fantastic artist if he were healthy and happy? We can't say for certain, but my guess is yes. There are plenty of artists who are happy and still make fantastic art. The idea that suffering is the one and only path to great art is dangerous. It led me to fear that getting treatment for my own mental health would be the end of my creativity. I used to be a mess. Having been abused as a child led to severe problems as an adult, and developing the aforementioned autoimmune disease and dealing with chronic pain only exacerbated the problems. But when I finally started getting treatment for my problems, my mind was actually freed up to focus on my art rather than using it art as a desperate way of coping. Ironically, it improved my creativity and my art drastically. And honestly, if I had to give up creating art or being healthy, I would choose to be a happy non-artist. You only live this life once, as far as we know anyway. Being unhappy is a tragic waste of a life. And I'm certain if Van Gogh were alive today, he'd choose happiness too. Or at least I hope he would. That poor man suffered enough. Number five, selling art is selling out. A lot of people who ascribe to suffering equals art seem to believe this too. 
the idea it's wrong or unseemly to profit from your work is just silly. If you utilize hours of hard-earned skill to produce an item that someone else values enough to buy, that just means you are in a position to work less time in a 9 to 5 with more time to focus on making more art. What selling your art means is you are effectively earning more time to devote to your art. And isn't that the entire point of being an artist? To make art? Now, I'm certainly not saying you have to sell art to be an artist. Not at all. But if you do sell, it doesn't make you any less of an artist. And a bonus, number six, black is the death of color. I included this one purely because it bothers me. If you're going for photorealism, sure, you won't generally use black for much. But the death of color? It's an exaggeration, because artists are generally good at exaggerating. But some take it as gospel. It's not. No art rule is, really. In art, the only rules are the ones that refer to medium limitations, like never putting acrylic over oil paint because the paint won't dry correctly. Stuff like that, those are art rules. But otherwise, anything goes. Just try it. Allow yourself freedom to fail. It's the only way to win. And that's about it for this video. I hope you found it useful or entertaining in some way. Um, if you did, please like, subscribe, do all the things. And I'm not going to promise to start posting weekly again or anything like that, just in case I don't do it. But I'll try my best. This has been Jesse Nebulous, and I hope you have a good one. Especially because it's kind of a weird world out there right now. Bye!